This will be a quick follow-up to the pair of R Factor 2 dedicated server tutorial videos already on the channel. It came about while I was setting up a dedicated server using paid DLC tracks and cars. It was something I had needed to clarify for myself and then I thought I would create a video on it should anyone attempting to include paid DLC content on a server experience similar issues. So I'll go through the installation of paid DLC content using the same method for installing free content from the R Factor 2 Steam Workshop. We'll begin by looking at what happens when joining a server which contains paid DLC content the player doesn't currently own. An error message appears, although the base mods and related updates are available on the server. I've been informed that Studio 397 have been planning that in future, standard multiplayer would function similar to the new competition system and prompt the user when joining a server including paid DLC content they don't already own. We'll use a Microsoft Azure virtual machine where the dedicated server is hosted in the cloud. This is just an example method of hosting a server and you can also host the server on your own network as we described in the original R Factor 2 dedicated server tutorial. For details on how to set up an R Factor 2 dedicated server on a virtual machine in the Azure cloud, refer to the dedicated server hosted in the Azure cloud tutorial video which I'll link to below. We'll begin by starting the virtual server and then we'll download the RDP file which will allow us to use remote desktop to connect to the virtual machine. We'll right click on the downloaded file and select show in folder. Then right click on the RDP file and select edit and then open the local resources tab. Then below select more and tick the box for the drive we have R Factor 2 installed on. Since we'll need to copy files from that directory to and from the dedicated server. And if you plan to run dedicated servers which include paid DLC content, it might be an idea to map your local drive every time you connect to the virtual machine. Should you need to copy over the files required to authenticate the use of paid DLC content on the dedicated server. We then click connect, add our credentials and log on to the virtual machine. We'll then return to our local PC and on Steam go to settings and then interface and enable display web address bars when available. Then select our name above and choose inventory, which will display all the paid DLC items we've purchased for R Factor 2. Then we'll select for example Sebring and click view workshop item. Then copy the content item ID above and return to the remote desktop view. Then open the download command via the desktop shortcut paste in the item ID and press enter. Then using two file explorer windows, on the right we'll open the packages directory where we'll copy the downloaded packages to and on the left the location of the downloaded files. And while the item continues to download on the server, we'll minimize the virtual desktop window and return to Steam to get the content ID for a paid DLC car. We'll use the view workshop item view for the Corvette C8 and copy the item ID. And then back in the remote desktop view, once the existing download has completed, we'll run the download command again and paste in the new item ID. Then on the left, we'll open the folders and copy over the package files to the packages folder on the right. And we can then delete the folders on the left as we don't need them anymore. Then we'll run the mod manager app to install the packages.
Note how once we've installed Sebring and then clicked refresh on the upper right of the window that it prompts for an update since the download includes two package files, the base mod and the update. So we then select the highlighted item and click update. And the same applies when installing the C8. Install, then use the refresh option if necessary. Select the highlighted item and click update. And we can then close the mod manager window. We can then open a file explorer window. And we can see that in the installed directory of the dedicated server, the content has been added to the relevant folders. Now we can create a new dedicated server package using the mass tool. We'll select create a new mod and give it a suitable name. And then proceed to select Sebring. Remembering to select the latest version of the track and the same for the car. Then we'll uncheck any track layouts we don't wish to include on the server and click package and then click install. And then we can examine the newly created package using the mod manager app where we can see that it looks correct and contains the relevant content. And then again, using two file explorer windows, on the right will open up the user data folder inside the R Factor 2 installation on our local PC, and on the left, the user data folder inside the dedicated server. And then from the left, copy the server keys.bin file and paste it over on the right. If there's a server keys.bin file already there, you can overwrite it. Then we'll minimize the remote desktop view again and from Steam start up R Factor 2. It should be enough to just load into the game on the main screen where the currently selected single player content is displayed. And we can then exit the game. Then we return to the remote desktop view and refresh the file explorer view on the right to make sure we're seeing the latest version of that folder as it appears from our local PC. Then copy the server unlock.bin file from the file explorer view on the right over to the view on the left. I find that sometimes, and I'm not exactly sure why it occurs, that when I begin the server session setup process, that the vehicle select screen is empty, and it appears to relate to the paid DLC content not being authenticated correctly. When this occurs, you can try generating the server unlock.bin file on your local PC again. First copy the server keys.bin file from the dedicated server over to the user data folder in Steam on your local PC. And then run rfactor 2 again to regenerate the server unlock.bin file. And if this becomes a recurring issue, as we suggested earlier, perhaps map the local drive where Steam is installed every time you connect to the remote computer. And in the quick access list, in the file explorer on the remote computer, you can pin links to the user data folder in the server on the remote computer and the user data folder in rfactor2 on your local PC. This will help to speed up the process of copying over the server unlock.bin file should you find yourself needing to do it repeatedly. Then we can start the dedicated server and begin by selecting the relevant server package. Then select the vehicles to include in the server and then the tracks to be included. And then start the server.
Then we can start our factor 2 and join the server.